If you just joined us on the system after dark, this is a homegrown number, courtesy of E3 and Cracker. Bula, how's it going? I'm D, your host on the system after dark, right here on Today FM. Today is hit music. You can catch me weeknights at 7 p.m. That's from Monday to Friday, only on the home of today's hit music. And don't forget, that's D with you every weeknight on the system after dark. Good evening, this is FBC News, I'm Jackie Spate. In this bulletin, police investigate report involving illegal firearms in the West. Nandi businessmen charged in $100 million drug bust. And trial date set for accused charged with rape of student. The intelligence arm of the Fiji Police Force is investigating a report involving firearms in the Western Division. However, as of tonight, the head of the police force isn't able to offer much details. Our reporter Edwin Nand is in Nandi and joins us now. Edwin, what can you tell us at this stage? Good evening, Jackie. I can confirm that Police Commissioner Ben Hunewald is in Lotoka tonight, waiting to meet with his senior officers in the Western Division, including Chief of Intelligence and Investigation, ACP Henry Brown. The Commissioner travelled to the West this afternoon and is waiting for a briefing on the investigation. The only confirmation he could give me at this stage is that the police are investigating offences in breach of the crimes decree. He could not comment on the nature of the said investigations. He was, however, able to comment that at this stage, no firearms have been seized, to his knowledge. I've also spoken with ACP Henry Brown this evening, and he confirms that the investigations are to do with sedition and inciting political violence. He did not comment on the involvement of firearms. We've also been informed that the DPP's office will issue a statement regarding the charges of sedition, possibly this evening. Back to you, Jackie. Thanks for that update, Edwin. Three men appeared in the Lautoka Magistrates Court today, each charged with one count of sedition and one count of inciting communal antagonism. Timothy Nangata, Peter Lambai Moala Vakatawa, and lawyer Simoni Nadolawa were produced in court. The trio were represented by Lautoka lawyer Aman Ravindra Singh, who asked to have their case transferred to the Raki Raki Magistrates Court. The three have been granted bail under strict conditions, despite the DPP strongly objecting to their bail applications, as investigations are continuing, which allegedly involve firearms. The trio will reappear in court on the 17th of August. A businessman from Malolo Nandi appeared at the Suva Magistrates Court today charged with one count of importing illicit drugs, namely methamphetamine worth $100 million. 37-year-old Pranil Chandran Reddy was remanded in custody to appear in the Suva High Court on the 21st of this month. Chanel Sivan reports. It's alleged that a container consisting of spare parts was sent from Mexico to Fiji. Authorities in Auckland, New Zealand allegedly found seven sealed plastic bags weighing 79.3 kg that were written out to Pranil Chandran Reddy. Reddy runs a spare parts business in Malolo Nandi and was the alleged receiver of the consignment that arrived at the Suva Wharf on the 25th of July. Police prosecutor Omendra Sharma told the magistrate Makareta Moa that Reddy should not be released on bail because the case allegedly involves drugs worth $100 million. Sharma said authorities in Mexico and New Zealand are closely following the case as their assistance led to the drug bust in Suva last Saturday. He also said the case is now of international interest and the reputation of Fiji has been tarnished. Defence lawyer Babu Singh said that his client cooperated with police and the amount was exaggerated to $100 million. Singh said it is $19 million and that his client should be released on bail. Magistrate Makareta Mua dismissed this application saying, in the interest of justice, Reddy should be remanded in custody. Shanal Shivan, FBC News. Suva High Court Judge Justice Alessi Temo has ordered that a 31-year-old laborer be medically re-examined after he alleged that he was beaten during an investigation. Laitia Nalawa, charged with rape and assault with intent to commit rape, burglary and theft, alleges he was assaulted by police before and after he was interviewed. Nalawa is alleged to have raped a 9-year-old student in Nakasi Nausori last month. 
Justice Temo ordered that Nalawa be medically re-examined at a time convenient to corrections authorities. The case has been adjourned to September 25th. Prime Minister Vurenge Mbaini Marama has apologized to Fijian residents living in Canada for the 1987 and 2000 coups. Mbaini Marama sought forgiveness as he officiated as chief guest at the Fiji Day celebrations in Canada yesterday. Still to come, government buildings clock to undergo repair. downtown Suva in the past hour and heard the clock at the Parliament building strike nine times, have no fear, all is well. The famous antique clock is undergoing some repair and refurbishment. A statement from Chief Justice Chambers says the clock will be off time for a few days as the work goes on. The antique icon of Parliament is being repaired by a clock expert from the United Kingdom. The new leadership of the Citizens Constitutional Forum is looking forward to mending relations with the government. The CCF had, until the September 2014 general election, been one of the main critics of the government and many of its decisions relating to the constitution and human rights. Shireen Lata reports. Work with stakeholders to, uh, Newly appointed Chief Executive Bulutani Mateitawaki Lai says one of his immediate goals is to re-engage with the government. Continuous improvement in our approach and our methodology. Uh, we'll try to be innovative uh, since um, our work are not cast in stone. <coughs> and we critically need to empower, raise awareness, and uh, build the capacity of members of our communities, especially the youth, uh, our women, and the community based uh, group. Another direction we want to move into is to work with stakeholders to uh, strengthen uh, leadership and good government training for community the ccf is currently running several programs about the constitution the bill of rights and providing leadership training at district divisional and provincial levels and we will pursue uh, continuous improvement in our approach and our methodology uh, we'll try to be innovative Madaitawaki Lai told FBC TV for the record program last night that the NGO will continue its advocacy role at policy level. Sharin Lata, FBC News. Minister for Health Chone Usumate has acknowledged the TISI Sangam School of Nursing for providing skilled workers in the medical sector. He says the ministry is committed to its partnership with the school in order to keep up the tempo of nurses joining the workforce. Julie Vatuwaliwali with the story. Minister for Health Chone Usamati says he's impressed with the midwifery models and the capabilities of the school to cater for the need for more nurses. Usamati adds the models used by the institution offer a glimpse of real-world scenarios. I salute the Sangam for investing in this. Investing in the training of nurses is going to have an impact on the people that they meet. Uh, when these people go out, they already are well versed with some of the things that they need to do. Osamati says Sangam Nursing School investment in new equipment and teaching methods is important in order to churn out graduates with the right set of skills. I'm very quite impressed with the models that they have the, uh, that allow people to sort of simulate what they would find in a, in a normal clinical situation here. I think that is very good because it raises their competencies. So rather than experimenting on real human beings, they experiment on models. The TISI Sangam, which has been running the nursing school in Lambasa since 2005, says it's committed to quality education. Much uh, appreciative of uh, the partnership where our graduates are being absorbed in the uh, health sector, of the uh, hospitals. Uh, around the, nation. the health ministry will be increasing the intake of nurses in the next five years. Julie Vatuwaliwali, FBC News.
Preparation for the Vodafone Hibiscus Festival is underway at its new venue at the Carpenters Foreshore in Suva. The Hibiscus Event Group Incorporated is hoping for fine weather this week so that it can have the place ready for the opening on Saturday. Savara Tamboa has more. The rain's held back today, giving organizers some hope for good weather for the rest of the week. Workers were busy putting up the rides and stalls for the annual festival. The Hibiscus Events Group Incorporated has organized various activities to draw crowds to the festival. In the, in the past years, we've had uh, organizations that come in to advocate about the product and the services they have. We also have the, uh, the financial institution also be part of it. it. In a way, this festival will also provide a one-stop shop for the members of the public to come and understand some of the services provided by organization and where they can go to. A total of 58 people will be competing for the various titles up for grabs, including the main hibiscus crown. The preparation, it's, it's pretty tough. It's, it's worth the stress though. It's very stressful, very tiring. But um, so far, I've learned to, to manage my time to be prepared for the unexpected. Very challenging thing for me as well because uh, I normally, I'm normally I'm an 8 to 5 lady going to work and then coming back home. But uh, now that I have accepted this challenge to be part of the Vodafone Fiji Hibiscus, it is now opening, opening my doors and even I'm getting out of my comfort zone to be part of something that is challenging enough for me. The festival kicks off with a march on Saturday. Sabo Ratambua, FBC News. After 16 years of paying rent and moving from one home to another, a young family is now living in the comfort of their own home in Lokia village, Rewa, thanks to government's rural housing assistance scheme. Eleanor Turangai View has more. The smiles say it all. It's now over a month since this young family moved into their new home and they are still elated. I still uh, can't believe uh, since today that uh, I can own a beautiful house. After moving home several times over the past few years, 38-year-old Temisia Kakaibono decided to apply for the Rural Housing Assistance Scheme. When we were searching uh, uh, for the recipient, uh, he was uh, on tour uh, in Sinai. And uh, uh, we made a negotiation and uh, his uh, cash was deposited uh, from the other side of the world. Close to $50,000 is allocated to the Rewa province this year for the rural housing scheme. Kakaivono is one of the five beneficiaries from the province. I think it's 18000 uh, full cost, but uh, I'm thankful that uh, I just have to pay uh, one third, which is 6185 and the other two thirds, which was uh, paid by the government. The rural housing assistance scheme has an annual budget of $100,000 and is aimed at upgrading the standard of living and housing in rural communities. Eleanor Turangaibu, FBC News. And sports is up next. Jamie joins you now with the latest. Nakateki and good evening. After the break, we take a look at John McKee's flying Fijian squad for the Rugby World Cup and Fiji's Special Olympics team honoured in Suva today. This and more coming up. Choo, choo, choo. Hey, hey, Namaste Fiji. Aapke har ek problem ke dawa lekar main aa gayi hu. 9 se 12 baje tak aapki saheli Reno. Choo, choo, choo. 40 ne 20 ka dikhna hai. Main hu na aapke saath mein Mirchi FM par 9 se 12 baje tak Monday to Friday. Mirchi, it's hot. Welcome back to FBC Sports. Before we go into our first item tonight, just an update from the Netball World Cup. The Fiji Pearls beat Zambia in winning its last pool match at the World Cup, beating Zambia 59-51. You can catch a replay of that match on FBC TV at midnight tonight. Vodafone Flying Fijians coach John McKee has named the strong 38-member preliminary squad to prepare for the Rugby World Cup in England next month. The squad includes two high-profile players who missed out on the Pacific Nations Cup due to injury. Charlie Ndavakadaka reports. World Cup veterans Seramaya Mbai and Netani Talei have been added to the mix to bolster the squad for what is expected to be a tough outing. Some additional um, members not added to the squad yet. Yeah, um 
Talai and, and Bai who were earlier injured and, and couldn't be included earlier on and now, now it's fully fit and, and back in contention. Talisman winger Nemani Landolo is back in the squad after recovering from a torn abdominal muscle. The team starts camp on Wednesday as McKee and his coaching staff lay out the master plan for the World Cup. So it'll be quite intensive uh, field rugby sessions which will be developing our, our skills and our game plan under, under a lot of pressure but, but also at the same time developing our fitness because we definitely need to be at a higher level than we were at uh, PNC. McKee will take 31 players to the World Cup next month. With all the talent in the squad, some high-profile players are expected to be left behind as Fiji hunts for a good finish in London. Talendo Dakavaka, FBC Sports. The six athletes who represented Fiji through the Special Olympics in Los Angeles, USA, were hosted to a luncheon in Suva today in honor of their medal-winning achievement. Fiji won a total of three gold, four silver and three bronze medals at the competition. Present at the event today were the athletes' family members and officials from the Ministry of Youth and Sports. Uh, today's uh, reception is an honor uh, for each and every one of uh, you, regardless of whether or not you won medals. Uh, you have all exceeded all our expectation, and you deserve all our appreciation. The athletes each received the cash voucher for their performance at the Special Olympics. A new boxing promotion company has set up shop and is ready to take the sport to new heights. Westwood Boxing Promotions, headed by first-time promoter Pranil Das, has roped in Ghanaian fighter Joseph Kwajo and upcoming slugger Sebastian Singh for a fight in Nandi next month. We're looking for a very exciting fight with Joseph Kwajo. As uh, all the boxing fans know, Joseph Kwajo is from Ghana and he's in the country to build a boxing. So I'm looking forward because a lot of <coughs> boxing fans in Fiji they are waiting so long since 2011. I fought my first, my last fight in Fiji. People want to see me fighting in uh, Fiji. The Westwood Boxing Promotions program will be held at Prince Charles Park on September 26th. There will be eight professional bouts and three amateur fights. The Rewa football side successfully defended the Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants title yesterday, beating Bar 2-0 in the final. While the victory was made sweet on home soil, it was the contribution from the younger Rewa reps that impressed the footballing faithful. Indra Singh has more. Celebrating the spoils of winning the BOG title on home soil, but the highlight of the win was the input by the young players in this Rewa side. And they come, Verovo waits. And Verovo has done that mistake by Mr. Winnie. For me, a player for the uh, tournament, uh, I'm really proud. Uh, I would like to thank my family, uh, my grandma, my mom, my uncle out there, and uh, all my brothers. They came to support me all over from the first day till the final day. Hughes races away, and he comes with a cross and played through. And played through as Rewa get their second Epeli Sokuru. The Delta Tigers had to endure a bar on a muddy and wet Ratu the Kambau Park and had all to celebrate for after the final whistle. Um, and, uh, and, uh, it was, it was, it was a, a, a team effort by the whole team and uh, also the, the coach Marika Rondo, he did wonders with the team. Their coach Marika Rondo once again proved he is amongst the best mentors in the country and his president says the coach is destined for higher honours. Uh, he has uh, proven everyone wrong, all the critics, uh, the way he, he, he moulded these players, he believed in, uh, in these players. The team management also praised its veteran players such as Usaya Tandu and Lori Mandau for guiding the youngsters. The backbone of, the, of our team, uh, Simi and Lorima and uh, Usaya Tandu, they have, they, have, they have guided these players all along. Well, I guess uh, they've uh, made an impact in the team and uh, I guess they played their part and the rest of the team played their part. All in all, everybody gelling together and it was a team effort. It's now celebration time for the Reds. After all, winning the title on home soil made the victory even sweeter. Interesting, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, in international football, Arsenal's season started with defeat as West Ham won their first English Premier League match 2-0 this morning. The Hammers stunned the Gunners against all odds to nail the first three points of the season. And in another match, Philippe Coutinho's stunning long-range strike gave Liverpool a 1-0 victory over Stoke. That was your sports for tonight. It's back to Jackie now with business.
drought conditions in most parts of the Western Division are expected to affect cane and sugar production this year. Acting Permanent Secretary for Sugar, William Ngudhake, says the Meteorology Office has predicted this weather will prevail until the end of the year. However, the latest figures show production has surpassed the estimates so far. There has been an increase in production of 31% for cane and 29% for sugar so far. The four sugar mills have crushed over 652,000 tonnes of cane and produced 72,000 tonnes of sugar. TCTS, or the ratio of tonnes of cane per tonnes of sugar, is 8.65. Fine weather prevailed over the country today. Cool southerly winds kept temperatures down but also brought clear skies and occasional sunshine. Looking at the temperatures, Suva recorded 26 degrees, Nandi 27, Lautoka and Ba hit 28 degrees, Sabu Sabu had the lowest afternoon temperature at 25, while Lombasa had the highest at 30. The forecast for tomorrow, much the same with cloudy periods and a chance of showers over the eastern part of the group, continuing cool temperatures. Outlook for Wednesday, mainly fine, cool at night. And the main points again. The intelligence arm of the Fiji Police Force is investigating a report involving firearms in the Western Division. Three men appeared in the Lautoka Magistrates Court today, each charged with one count of sedition and one count of inciting communal antagonism. An Anandi businessman appeared at the Suva Magistrates Court today, charged with one count of importing illicit drugs, namely methamphetamine worth $100 million. Now to our poll segment. The results are from last week. 56% said yes. This week we're asking, do you think Fiji underestimated its pool opponents at the Netball World Cup? Log on to the FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You can also find us on YouTube, FBC TV 2011. You've been watching FBC News. Join us again at the same time tomorrow. I'm Jackie Spate. Bye for now.